What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and today for you guys I have my review slash tutorial of Motion VFX M Transition Kinetic, a pack of raucous transitions for Final Cut Pro. Off the bat they look like some of the highest quality movement based transitions out there, so let's check them out. Roll the intro. <laughs> As ever, links to this software plus any other relevant videos I've popped in the description box below. And of course, this is not sponsored content, so if you do enjoy it, please, it would mean a lot to me if you could hit subscribe and give me a like. So what is it? And Transition Kinetic is a pack of 50 4K ready transitions for Final Cut, which give your footage a really dynamic feel whilst pairing with slick looking text. Like most of Motion VFX products, they are extremely easy to use. Let me show you how they work. In Final Cut now, and I've got these two clips, the first has a gentle rising motion, and the second has just some very subtle handheld movement. Now these are not necessarily clips that require a transition, but I thought it would be a fine example just to show you what these transitions can do. So I've got my presets here, and you can see when you drag the mouse over, you get a really fast representation of what the transition's actually going to give you. For most of the presets, there seems to be a variation for right, left, up, and down. In this case, our first clip is a rising motion, which actually, contrary to what you might think, means we need a down motion preset following that same motion that the camera is doing. I'm going to go with the flow down preset because it's got some fairly smooth movement in the clip. So I'm just going to drag this into our timeline and the first thing I usually do is park the playhead right in the middle so I can see what's going on with this transition. Straight away I can see that having text in this transition is not going to be appropriate. So straight away I'm going to turn off those two text boxes. Immediately it looks really good, I mean these are so easy to use, however there are a few other things that we can tweak in the menus. So with our transition selected you can see we have access to the vignette blur which I love, so definitely going to keep that ticked. The blur amount, and I, I really like this too, I really like it as it is on default mode at 30. To me, this helps to sell the kind of natural movement. Next, we have lens bulge, which kind of simulates barrel distortion. Again, I love it. I'm not going to turn that off. Next, we have lens opacity, and this adds what looks like the front element of a lens superimposed over the top of our footage. Here, you can see it with and without, and this is going to be a stylistic decision. I almost always leave it on. I even turn it up sometimes because I think it looks really good. You can also tweak the hue that the color of the lens is, presumably if you want to match or contrast it to certain colors in your footage. Other than that, of course, we have two text zones, which you have the very familiar controls where you can adjust all the parameters that you would ever need. And this is what I came up with. I basically stuck with all the parameters that I landed on in that demonstration. Looks sweet. Stylistically, there's quite a lot going on. Basically, any movement in any direction is covered. So regardless of the type of movement in your footage, you should be able to find one that suits it. As I covered in the last section, there are lots of choices whether you need left, right, up or down motion. And then each one is described in its type of movement. We've got burst, drift, glide, lean, revolve, rotate, slide, spin, zoom, stretch, shuffle, and loads of others. One thing I love is it's really easy to find the preset you need because it's so obvious what you're gonna get from each one. In my recent review of M Transition Scrub, I had issue with the way that they're labeled because they're just numbered. And that was a pain because I basically had to drag each one onto my timeline to see what was going on. Luckily for these ones, not a problem. It's way more obvious. Something I haven't yet touched on is here in the inspector when you have the transition selected where it says drop zone B. And you can see in this transition, which is the horizontal in, the second half of it is actually inverted so that the background is black and the text is showing the footage. And by making changes here, we can really drastically affect the look of the final transition. For example, if I change this drop down to default, you can see it reverts to the style you'll see in some of the other presets with the text just as a solid color. So I've changed it back to inverted now. And if I change the background color to white, this alone makes a big difference to the look. Just much cleaner, much brighter looking, or we can go for any color. Let's try a surfy kind of blue. And there we go. Do you know, the first time I used M Transition Kinetic on this channel, it prompted lots of comments from you guys asking me what it was. Let me show you a clip from that video now. 
And this is my thumbnail from the M Callout Specs review video I did. So all I've done is just take a similar nice looking photo and then I'm just going to drag it into Final Cut Pro where I've just spent some time dragging in three different callouts. I've played with the colours and tried to make them really stand out and look. So there you go. I think the reason that it worked so well in that case was that my voice and the text were in sync. So I would definitely say these are attention grabbing for sure. So in terms of application for these transitions, I would say they're best suited for modern product marketing, travel videos, and in particular, music videos. To demonstrate it, here's a clip from a music video that I filmed. Here comes the before and after. So this is the section of the video where I would usually try and pick it apart and find fault with the product. With this one I can't. It's just it's just so polished and the, the only thing that I could say is that if you load too many on you might notice a bit of slowdown but that goes for anything. Any kind of plugins, any kind of transitions. So I can't find, I'm sorry, I can't find fault. And so finally to my opinion and M Transition Kinetic offers some of the smoothest and most believable movement I've ever seen in a transition pack. One thing I really love is that you can see what looks like the front element of a lens throughout the transition and it really helps to sell the realism of the movement. And that's the key thing about these transitions. To your non-video editor audience, these look like very fancy, highly edited practical effects that for all they know, took a great deal of skill to film and edit. So in short, I think they're great. They're really easy to use. They look really slick and professional. And as with almost every single Motion VFX product I've used, they have such a polished high-end feel. They're just, they're great. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Of course, I've got a large back catalog of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube has handpicked this top video for you. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.